if you cannot save or change me, lead me as you met me. So sanctification, listen, is pretty much common among the conversation of believers, yet it is not practiced among believers. It is not that we don't know, it's not that we have not heard, oh my God, but we don't practice sanctification. We see it as a theory of something theoretical. We see it as theological. Uh, Dr. Chavis was talking about the spiritual disciplines of fasting and prayer and living by the word, being led by the spirit, submitting to authority, loving your neighbors, those disciplines that we have to practice. But sanctification is a practice too. It's a discipline. It's a discipline. And you should not live saved by struggle. You should not struggle to live right. You should not struggle. We self sanctification is not a struggle. You have been given Holy Spirit so you can forgive. Forgiveness is an act of grace that is released in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Good God Almighty. Wow, glory to God, I heard you. Somebody write that down. It's an act of grace that is shed abroad in our hearts by the Spirit. It is the, it is the Spirit of God that gives us the grace to forgive. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Pat, Pat, Pat Dunn. My God, come on here. It's the Holy Spirit that relieves our hearts from the burden of grudges and offense. You know you get offended. Ain't nobody got to come and send for the best prophets, send for Archbishop, Master Prophet Bernard Jordan. You know you get offended. You know that you get triggered and you have traumas that you have yet to resolve and you get offended where offense was never the intent. You chose to be offended. That's a rat, man. That's a rodent. But you have been given the grace. Good morning, my daughter. April, my baby girl. That's my chief. She keeps me together. We have been given the grace. Rashard David, good morning. <laughs> we have been given the grace, Jackie Harrison. We've been given the grace, Debbie Ross to release all offense and offense is tied to anger which is tied to pride you know you struggle with pride you don't feel heard you don't feel uh a scene you don't you don't you didn't have your voice as a child and now you've made it up in your mind <laughs> I, I, ain't nobody gonna never do that to me again you know you struggle with that your old man that's a rodent and so sanctification is a spiritual discipline that is given to us freely from God by his Holy Spirit. You cannot live holy without the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Somebody write that down, Zelma. Now, so it's got to be more than 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 a theory. It's got to be more than something that was in a Sunday school class. Sanctification is given to us as a spiritual discipline. As we commune with Holy Spirit, as we interact with Holy Spirit, as we are intimate with Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, he is the, he is the secret sauce to our sanctification. Somebody write that down because I can't remember all this. This is coming fresh from the Lord. I just got my Bible and I just want you to know these notes. This is the Holy Spirit. He's talking to us every time we get in this class. He comes and he, he teaches us. I wish I was this smart, Patricia Morrison. I wish that I knew this much. It's the Holy Spirit. Sanctification shouldn't be a struggle. 
Holiness is, you don't live holy by struggle. You live holy by the spirit. That's how you live holy. You live holy by the Holy Ghost. He is the source of your holiness. And as you commune, as you fellowship, as you intimatize with Holy Spirit, he will reveal to you. He will convict. He will show you. He will, he will expose the rodents. Sometimes, you know, when you have mice, you hear them, you know, and, 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 and you might not even hear them, but you begin to see their droppings. He said, wait a minute, wait, wait, there's an, there's a, there's an intruder in my space. And when you began to see the droppings, you say, wait, 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 you know, let me set the traps. Let me, you don't want rodents in your space. You know, the worst thing in the world, listen, Bishop Vaughn, I fight a demon. I fight a giant. I fight, but a mouse. Oh, my God. You have to come and get me. I don't want no mouse running out. I don't I don't want my house occupied. I want to share my space with rodents. I'm even nervous about animals. My kids got animals. I'm like, oh, give me all the children in the world, but. You know, I'm loving, I love my grandbabies, though, my grandpuppies, but they, they go home with their families. <laughs> I don't want to spend on it. I don't want to share my space with that. I don't want to clean up poop. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to share my space with rodents. I don't want to share my space with unwanted visitors, unwelcomed visitors. I don't want to do that. And you shouldn't want to do that. You don't want to live with depression and distrust and skepticism. These are rodents. 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 Oh my God. You don't want to live like that. Ooh. And so Holy Spirit, Sandra Bain, is the secret sauce. Dr. Ridley is the secret sauce to our holiness. And so many people believers begin to think that sanctification is impossible to attain and it is by the flesh but it is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that sets us free from the law of sin and death you are you are you don't we don't realize what happened at Pentecost. We don't fully understand the power that that came in that room, the mighty rushing wind. That wasn't just a photo op, folks. That wasn't just, you know, something to be dramatic. Come on, God. Yeah, he can be, he can be dramatic, but he, he was cleaning and sweeping. And, and, and he was revolutionizing them. The wind began to blow. He was revolutionizing their minds and their thinking and their natures. That just wasn't for, for the Jerusalem news to put it, uh, to air it and, and put it in the paper the next day. No, this wasn't just a prop, man. This was a mighty rushing wind that blew in suddenly, man, the other day. I was studying and I heard that word suddenly. Whoa, that thing worked in my spirit all day. I couldn't hardly get past it. Sometimes I post things because it come in my spirit like that. Suddenly, a mighty rushing wind came in. You, you, no, no, that didn't. It's no way possible that they could, they could deep plane, they could come out of the upper room the way they went in there. It's impossible, folks. You're playing with sanctification. You have given yourself permission not to live a holy life while you're speaking in tongues. I don't care if you feed the hungry. I don't care if you go out and clothe the naked. I don't care if you have, you know, all that you, that. but if you have not love, if you've not been sanctified, to love your enemies, and your enemies sometimes might be family members, but it, it profits you nothing. 
You're going to tear up your body killing yourself with food. You're going to tear up your liver. You're going to tear up your heart. You're going to tear up your pancreas and all of your blood veins and vessels and arteries because you don't want to divorce food. You don't want to divorce snacks. Those are rodents. And the Holy Spirit is being given to us to break habits. He is the secret sauce. Glory to God. And Christians, you can see that that sanctification is a part of, of the package that you receive from Jesus Christ. However, you neglect it as a discipline. And, and because Holy Spirit has been minimized in our services, you go to church, you know, not the cathedral, but you can go to church all your life and hear maybe five sermons on the Holy Spirit. And so because we have minimized Holy Spirit in our theology, in our homiletics, and even in our hermeneutics, because we have neglected the work of Holy Spirit, we have focused on the blood of Jesus. We fo and yes, that's, that's, that's the efficacy of the blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But now that I'm saved, now that I have embraced the doctrine of the faith in, in the blood of Jesus Christ, am I going to struggle with sin all my life? You ain't gave me nothing to help me. Good God Almighty. Oh, Ruthie. If you ain't gave me nothing, you're going to save me? Then you should have left me as you met me. <laughs> Come on now. It's like a man that finds a wife and he loves her and he, he brings her into uh, the place of marriage and communion and intimacy. But you ain't going to do nothing else after that. You ain't going to feed me. You ain't going you ain't, to you ain't, you ain't, you ain't touch me. You ain't going to hug me. You ain't going to say nice things to me. You just go, what? 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 You tricked me. Then you should have left me like you met me. <laughs> Yay! Glory to God. <laughs> Come on now, stop making excuses and delaying the inevitable. You're playing with this stuff. You're not really, really trying to stop overeating. You're not really, really trying to stop getting offended and being triggered. You're not, you're not really trying. It, because if you knew that it was a part of your sanctification, let me tell you what the Lord told me. I told my sister this. We were talking on the phone one night and I was going through, God had dealt with me. <laughs> and, and I'd gone someplace and had a great meeting with, with souls and Tens of, I probably by now, millions have received the Holy Spirit and received the, the teaching of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'd come back and I was just kind of chilling on the couch and the kids was upstairs playing or whatever. And we was, we was just chilling. Sister, my sissy Ruth, we was talking on the phone. And I said, Ruth, I said, guess what God told me? And she said, what? I said, he told me I was fat. <laughs> I'm not playing. I'm serious. He said, you fat. And I was like, what? Did you see all them souls? Did you see all them people get filled with all the ghosts? He said, but you fat. You're going to have to discipline yourself. Because if not, you will die before time. I can't use you like this. And your body is going to get out. I and I was so convicted. You would think that he had caught me with somebody's husband. I mean, you would think that, you know, because we, in our mind, we have certain levels of what we consider to be really like felonies. And then we got misdemeanors, right? And he said, you fat. And I said, oh my God. Now, let me tell you something. It's been a journey. I'm still in the journey because sanctification is a daily discipline. It's a daily discipline. Listen, you cannot tell me that there is a better candy than M&M with peanuts. It, it just can't be. I've had all kinds of candy from all over the world, but I will settle for a share bag 
And it ain't for sharing. My daughter Shannon said, Ma, you can't share it because you don't want nobody to get there. It's so good. And I'm doing homework and I'm teaching and, 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 and talking and, and typing and researching and Googling and copying and pasting. And, and you, you don't even realize it. Look, he said, you fat. And that was like 60 plus pounds ago, but it took me on a journey because I had to be sanctified. I, I, I went to my doctor. I, I mean, I, whatever I needed to do, I did it. And now I have to practice what it is. It's just like my, my daughter, April, she put something on the other day about the 600 pound life and how the doctor that's there, I think he's hilarious, but he's just brutally honest. By now, you could have lost 100 pounds. Like, oh, you're not really trying. You're not, because you don't connect it to sanctification. You put it in a category that is not a nemesis to you. And I'm telling you, Holy Spirit, it will, when you begin to commune with the Holy Spirit, when you really begin to be serious about your communion with Holy Spirit, he will sanctify you. He will sanctify you. Y'all understand it. Ooh. <laughs> Good morning, Rhonda. Good morning. And I'm like, wow, because he chastises those he loves. He chastises those he loves. And the things that you bury, come on now. Somebody told me something about a young young lady that loves God. Left her husband to be with a woman. Now come on. Come on. Now come on. And you preachers. Come on. Now come on. Come on. You, you done put this, you done made sanctification. You've exempted yourself from sanctification. You've exempted yourself. Pastor John Davis coming up the timeline. Hey, Shaq. Right, right. And what? It ain't for charity. It ain't enough. Look, I got so big with that demon that I found this company called Box. And they, they give you, you know how you find those, those, those containers with the cashews and stuff at Sam's Club and Costco's and things like that? They had M&M peanuts. I, I, what? What? And I looked at that. And I, I was, I was temp, I was almost to the bottom. I said, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, here, devil." And then you be shocked, like, "Ooh, I just can't wear my clothes. My clothes are shrinking. No, bro, you is getting fatter. I'm not gonna take off sixty plus pounds to put sixty to put eighty back on." We we don't realize that all of that is sanctification. You're medicating yourself. I was medicating. I was medicating on the road. I was medicating. I was medicating. Anything like a Mr. Good Bar, anything with a peanut and some chocolate. What? Medicating. Medicating myself. And you're medicating yourself with whatever area that you have not allowed Holy Spirit. So you medicate yourself with anger. You medicate yourself with, they did me wrong. You just don't understand. My people, my, my cousin, my aunt, they just, that's, they, they, that. You're medicating yourself because you have, you have totally disconnected it from the discipline of sanctification. And you are not saying to Holy Spirit in your communion, deal with me. Deal with me. Take what's wrong and make it right. Spirit deal throughout the night. And we, we medicate with ministry. We medicate ourselves with that pulpit. We medicate ourselves with the, uh, the, the heart we have for the, for the children or for the prisoners or for the widows. We medicate, but we still not sanctify. And there cannot be sanctification without Holy Spirit. It is our duty. It is our duty, our obligation. If God cannot save me and change me, then 
He should have left me like he met me. Woo! Is anybody hearing me? Is anybody? Good morning, Mr. Woods. Good morning. Good morning, Monica. God bless you. You're that follower. Listen, I'm serious about this. I'm not telling you. Listen, and it's not by struggle. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. It is not by might. Somebody write that in. Somebody write that in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody write that down. Let's, let's get that in our spirit this morning. It's not by might. It's not by power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Mm. Uh, uh. Woo. And it ought to be foremost in our mind. Now, I want you to get, I want you to go with me in this scripture. And, and this has just been in my heart, Jude. And Jude has one chapter. And I want to read just one verse. All right. I, I just, I just want to, now all glory to God. Verse 24. Who is able to keep you from falling away. Listen to this. And will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. Ooh, my God, that's Jude. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Get your paper Bible. You know, you know what we do up in this class. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jealous and, and still uh, hard to get along with Roshan and still oh no 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 unwilling to let things go no 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 you may not be committing the acts and I want to talk about for just a moment the sins of commission and the sins of omission we don't hear sermons like we used to hear. You know, when I was growing up, you know, you know, not in my church in particular because, you know, we grew up Baptist and, and that. But I, I was always, my dad would listen to Oral Roberts and Catherine Kuhlman and different people. And so I had access to some wonderful teachers. And then I had a saved mom and dad that just, you ain't going to bring that up in here. My, my birthday party, I think I was turning eight or nine. Motown was just kind of coming out and, you know, I might have been turning nine or ten, maybe. And, uh, you know, them boys, they right here from the hood in Detroit. And that music was so pop, them little 45s. Y'all remember those with the little disc in the middle? And I, I, I wanted that at my birthday party. And my mama said, oh, no, you're not bringing that worldly music up in here. No, sir. And so for my birthday party, <laughs> she played Doris Day. How much is the doggy in the window? And I saw Mama kissing Santa Claus. And Lord, the next day when I got to school at Monday, I was the laughing stock of the school. But she was trying to keep my innocence. Now we just doing anything. We just allowing anything to take our innocence, to remove us from purity of the Lord. I want to be pure. I don't just want to be saved. I want to be pure. I want the essence of God to be in my life, man. I want that to make me attractive. I want to be attractive by the spirit. Yes, I want you to recognize that's a woman of God. She's a holy woman of God. There's certain things I'm not going to do around her. certain things I'm not going to say around her. She's a holy woman of God. And I don't think that... That means you have to be ugly or you have to not be attractive as a man or as a woman, but you're holy and it's, it, it oozes from you. We've lost that. Now unto him, you know this verse from the New King James or from the King James. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the majesty of his glory with exceeding joy. You know that. But I want to read it. Good morning, my elder Nettie. Coming up this timeline, Gwen. Good, good morning. Come on. I want to read this. This is Jude verse 24. Now, I'm reading out the New Living Translation, the NLT. Now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away 
and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. Without a single fault, folks. Woo, thank you, Joyce. My God, are y'all in the class? Y'all writing? Y'all taking notes? Come on, come on, like, tag, and share when you get in here because there are people that need to hear this. Thank you, Anita. Yes, yes, Gail. Ooh, glory to God. Andrea, let's go. Job. Get them in here. Hallelujah, Pastor Blocker, that I would be presented without a single fault. You understand what I'm saying? So on our way <laughs> to Pentecost, Listen, you got to clean out your music. You have to clean out. Your, but it's not, it's not that you can't enjoy it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not telling you that you would leave the world. Paul says, I'm not telling you to leave the world, but I'm telling you to live holy in the world. And God, his Holy Spirit will sanctify. It's not my might. It's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Oh, my God. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Now, look at verse 20 of Jude. Now, after, after Jude talks to them about the iniquity among them and what was to come, you know, he says, listen, I, I, I want you to, to, to get back to to the, to the warfare and contending for the faith that was once given to the saints. He said, I plan to, to write you about the common salvation that we share. This is Jude chapter one, of course, beginning in the beginning where Jude sets the, the parameters of what he's going to talk about. He said, but instead of just, you know, like chatting about salvation, I, I felt urge and urging to write you to defend the faith to contend for the faith is what the king says the new living says to defend the faith that god has entrusted watch this once for all time to his holy people he said well i'm god's i'm god's man i'm god's woman i'm his holy people we are but now you gotta practice the discipline of it Listen, verse, verse four, I say this because some ungodly people have wormed. Listen, y'all, I'm, I, I, I just, I'm just going to read it. I'm, you, this, a lot of it don't need exegeting, okay? That, that ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches saying that God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. Oh my God, my God, my God. They have, they, they have wormed their way into your churches. Now this is June. So we're talking at least 2,000 <laughs> years ago. And it's the same problem. I'm going to say, oh no, you ain't bringing Temptation. Do you know what temptation is? Oh my God. Woo child. Y'all don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, how would you want to be listening? To, you're not going to be listening. My mother was not a fussy girl. She was a lady. You're not going to be bringing the temptations in here because I don't want you tempted. <laughs> you know what temptation means? Oh Lord, here we go. That's a sit down at the dining room table with the Webster Dictionary and the Bible. Here we go. Do you know what temptation means? Why would I want you, 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 my daughter, why would I want you to be listening to something called temptation? Do you think your mommy would want, you think your daddy would want that? that, that that's a whole, that's going to be a week revival at the dining room table with, with the Bible and a dictionary. I want you to read it now. So she going to go get the dictionary. It's a big old dictionary. Well, you know, at that time, you had the World Book Encyclopedias. And she would go, and now you got the encyclopedia. Now you got the dictionary, and you got the Bible. Now, I want you to read it. 
What does temptation mean? Now she gonna go get the hymn book because now we gonna sing, yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. See, it wasn't just, no, you can't listen to it. It's a whole revival about to come. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm telling you right now, when, when she got through with me, we ain't heard no temptations. We ain't heard none of that. We had grocery store music, my sister say. And we have, oh, oh listen, we got that World Book Encyclopedia, got that Webster's Dictionary, got that Bible, and now we're going to sing, Yield Not to Temptation. Why would I want you to be listening to the spinners? Do you know what that means? Look it up. Turn the spinners. Go to your S's. <laughs> Do you understand? So... <laughs> My mama was saved. My daddy was saved. My mama made sure my daddy was saved. <laughs> and so sanctification was in our, it was in our context. And I realized that everybody didn't have that. And then some of you did have it, but you started stretching out the boundary. Let these kids be kids, you know. And, and I'm not saying that they can't enjoy life. There's beautiful music out there. There's good stuff out there. There's great love songs. There's some good old school stuff. You're not going to beat me with Gladys Knight and, and, and Al Green. Look here, I'm sitting on the front row. What? <laughs> what? Woo, child. George Benson, Rainy Night in Georgia. I, I, I'm, I'm a musician, so I love stuff like that. But anything that will rob me of my purity, the purity of my ears, the purity of my eyes, I need to be sanctified. The purity of my tongue. I sang a song yesterday. Keep my tongue. Keep my tongue. We, that ain't just talking. That's eating. That's drinking. That's all of those things. Keep my tongue so I can speak thy praise. Keep me all the way. Keep my heart and keep my hands. Whoa, glory to God. And keep my soul, I pray. That's my will and my volition. And keep my tongue so I can speak thy praise. Keep me all the way. Lord, I want to live for thee. Oh, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I, I want to live. Do you want to live for it? This is the purpose of Holy Spirit. To, to give you the, 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 the wherewithal, the resources. Now watch what he says. Jude says, he says that 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 ungodly people, verse four, have wormed their way into your churches. Good God Almighty! Woo! <laughs> yes, Evangelist Robin, we need mommies like that again. Yes, come on, Doctor Patrick Johnson. <laughs> come on, baby. Woo, son, I want to live for him. He said, I sing it every Sunday. I said, what? I love this child. Let me tell you something. I want to live for thee. Oh, God, God, God. In my weakness, be my strength. Hey, God, shit. Got my mind on shut. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. And so they have wormed their way <laughs> into our churches. And they have said to us, listen. That God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. Now, immorality is not just sexual sin. Immorality. And so now we are preaching it from the pulpit. And preaching it and living it in front of the people. Now we are living loose lives. The worship leaders are living loose lives. The pastor, the ministerial staff, living loose lives. The deacons and the trustees and the usher board want to take a trip to Vegas to gamble. Come on now. Living loose lives. <laughs> living loose lives. Because if the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm, I'm talking Pentecostals now, 
I'm talking Baptist. I'm talking Orthodox. I'm talking Protestants. I'm, I'm telling you, it has has wormed. They have wormed their way into our sacred spaces, and they are telling us that God's grace that was intended to tell you to say no to ungodly lust, that the spirit of grace now, come on now, it gives you the, the, in the long, longitude and the latitude to live immoral lives. Oh, is anybody hearing me? Oh, God. Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing this? And so now we we just all over everything. We just everywhere. And so our light is dim in the marketplace. Our light is dim with our family. Our light is dim. And Jesus kept saying, you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Why would you take the light and hide it under a bushel basket. You're the light of the world. You are the salt. But if the salt loses its savor, then what good is it? If you have lost your salt, if you, you are what is supposed to be the model in the earth, come on now, so that those, we are, we are the contrast culture. We live, we live, we don't live counterculture. We live contrast culture. We ain't even trying to be counter the culture. We are setting up a standard that does not exist within the culture. We must set the whole contrast. They got to look at the believers. They, I don't care what, what stream you coming through. That's not my, that, that's not my assignment. My assignment is to get all of the church, everybody who says that they want to know God. My assignment is to get you to Pentecost. That's my assignment, to get you to Pentecost. And Pentecost is not just that one day experience. Pentecost is a lifestyle. Ooh, hey, hey, glory to God. My God, are you listening to me? And the condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they now have denied our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, look over to verse 20, because Jude goes through a whole litany of the things. Listen, these scriptures, they, I didn't write these scriptures this morning. They, they've been before us. But go back and count how many sermons you really heard on Jude. Go back and, and, and tell me how many how many sermons have you really heard on Jude? Go ahead and tell me. Tell me how many sermons have you really, really heard on Jude? <laughs> Amen. And, and really, 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 seriously have been convicted by the teaching on Jude. Now, watch this, verse 20. But you, dear friends, must build your, you must build each other up. In your most holy faith and pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. My God. It says these people, and he talks about them in the verses prior. He said, verse 19, these people are the ones who are creating divisions among He calls them clouds with no water. My God. Wow. And they're satisfying their own ungodly lusts. And they're, listen, I'm going to tell you something. They're doing ministry to do it. They're using ministry to do it. There's, a, there is something about us, particularly church people, that think that ministry is the end all, be all, answer to all. It's not. There are seasons when God ordains something, and it is God. And then that season ends. Now you have to create it in a way that is still attractive. And then you start putting the wrong materials in it because the season for that is over. That, that, that season is no, it was intended to just be a seasonal thing. It's like, it's like perennials and annuals. You have flowers that come back every year. You have flowers that you have to dig up and plant new every year. So knowing those seasons, knowing those seasons, he said, now these people are creating divisions among you. Because they follow their natural instinct. 
because they do not have God's spirit in them. Good God Almighty. Woo! <laughs> but you, dear friends, the ones Jude is talking to, <laughs> All of you that are called of God, all of you that 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 have named the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. And in this, you will keep yourselves safe. In God's love. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes God. He said now you must show mercy to those. Verse 22. Whose faith is wavering. You must rescue others. By snatching them. From the flames of judgment. And show mercy. To still others. But do it great with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. See, so now, not only is sanctification a discipline for you, it is also an admonishment that should come from us to others. Girl, ain't you say, you say, you still doing that? See, that's it, men to men, you know, hey dude, come on, really? Yeah, but come on, you gotta call a brother out. You gotta, if you if you love them, you said snatch them out. Glory to God. And but do it with great caution. And you do it because you're hating the sin that contaminates their lives. You cannot tell me that you don't know sin contaminates your life. Hatred and anger and unforgiveness. And jealousy and iniquity, those things. I'm not dealing so much with the outside stuff, but the rodents, the rats that come inside and take up residence in your sacred space. Mm. Oh my God, my God, musicians and folks don't want to live safe. Don't don't want. He said, now, he said, you must rescue. So not only are you built up. In the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, praying in your prayer language every day, speaking in tongues, speak. Yes, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And Paul says that when I pray in the Spirit, my mind is not fruitful. I'm not praying from here. I'm praying from my belly. I'm praying the Spirit of God. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Some of you, you live clean, but you also are judgmental. You are judgmental of others. You are just, he doesn't tell you to be judgmental. He said, snatch them out. He said, and, 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 and when you snatch them out, glory to God. He says, you snatch them out from the flames of judgment. You show mercy. And then there are others that you will do it hating that the sins contaminate their lives. Oh, my God, my God, my God. And when you are building yourself up in your most holy faith, you're communing with Holy Spirit. You cannot tell me you didn't hear him. You did hear him. You cannot tell me that Holy Spirit didn't speak. He did speak. You cannot tell me that you don't know better. You do know better. But your arrogance and your pride and your don't want to do it. Ain't nobody going to hurt me no more. That attitude of arrogance and pride where, where you going to be just you and God and one man back. It doesn't work like that, sugar. Glory to God. You have Got to be able to hear the Holy Spirit's voice. You got to know when he's speaking to you. What is he doing? He's sanctifying you. He's sanctifying you. He's, he's letting you know that thing that irritated you for 20 years and you still irritated. You cannot tell me Holy Spirit has not brought that to your attention. He has. 
because he doesn't leave his post. You just overrode it and you continue to override it because you want to self-justify. But you heard the Holy Spirit. You knew that there was wrong. You knew your response wasn't clean and pure. It wasn't sanctified. You know the jealousy and what you harbor in your heart. You know it. And by now, you could have you could have lost 100 pounds. Come over here. You, by now, you could have got rid of some of them rodents. By now, they, they, they having babies. Now, come on, you could have. But we don't believe that sanctification is the discipline of the Holy Spirit. We just believe it's a theory. We just believe it's a doctrine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 whatever. Okay, you must be holy. Follow holiness with all men. We know the scripture. But we don't want to live this. And you should not be able, amen, to, to, to just be comfortable in your sin. I'm going to go back to what I said yesterday. Look, God, if you can't save me and you ain't going to change me, come on, if you're not going to save and change me, guess what? Leave me like you meant me. Ooh, God, in the name of Jesus. This is so good. This is so, so good. Listen to me very carefully. They told me that I forgot to take the offering the other day, and I did. It's a $5 offering every week, which y'all go ahead on to do that today. And some of you did. I, I got hijacked by the Holy Spirit. I just totally forgot. Praise God. We just totally forgot. We will do communion again on this weekend, Friday, but I just totally forgot. If you feel so led to sow a $5 seed. If you feel so led, if you don't, it's fine. Don't worry. Every Friday we do it. But we overlooked it this Friday because Holy Spirit just hijacked me and we were in so deep. But he just reminded me to give you the opportunity to sow a $5 seed. It's easy. It's just dollar sign, Corletta Vaughn, or you can go to paypal.me forward slash Corletta Vaughn, C-O-R-L-E-T-T-A, V-A-U-G-H-N. And if you're giving by Zelle, that's bank to bank, it's Corletta Vaughn at gmail.com. $5 C every week is what we give. And so this week you'll give it twice because I forgot. <laughs> I was so in where I was. But Holy Spirit just reminded me, give my people the opportunity to sow. And you don't have to wait for me. You can sow anytime. But I want you to do that. I love y'all so much. Listen, folks, let me just pray with you for this week to be a week of victory and favor. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that this week for the school of the Holy Spirit and for those with whom we will share will be a week of, of favor, a week of, of really listening and communing with Holy Spirit. That this will be a week I hear the Lord say, even with time management. Oh, wow. Yes, Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, time management uh, is a work of grace that has to be done by the Spirit. Some of us just are busy and we're, we're just doing a lot of things. We have a lot of things on our plate. I just hear the Holy Spirit uh, just whisper in my ear that that needs to be sanctified. Even your time needs to be sanctified. Thank you, Father. Mm. Hallelujah. Sanctification, uh, that you would sanctify your time. You would sanctify time to spend with the Holy Spirit, that you would sanctify time. Carve it out in the name, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for just great favor this week. Uh, increased sensitivity and hearing that Holy Spirit will not struggle with us. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Share this, hashtag it, get it all over the internet in Jesus' name. I love y'all. Glory to God. Hallelujah.